It's been a little while now. I've had this Monoprice Select Mini 3D printer, the $200 3D printer, for a little while now, and I've run it through its paces. I think it's time that I can give it an honest assessment. You excited? I'm excited. Let's go. When I bought this Monoprice Select Mini 3D printer, I, well, it was a $200 3D printer, but still somehow I managed to get my hopes up. I thought, maybe this is the one. Maybe this is the printer that fulfills all of my desires. I mean, it's $200. At that price, there's no reason not to get it. And so it would be a good printer to like tell my parents, hey, get this 3D printer. And, and that way, if it's easy enough to use, and if the software is advanced far enough, you'll have a 3D printer that's you know, it's $200, so if you don't use it all the time, it's fine, but if you use it a little bit, it's great. So, in fact, I did that. I recommended to my parents that they buy this same printer, and it was very interesting to me to hear about their uh, experiences with it. My parents said that, first of all, they couldn't find the instructions. What they came, what they got in the box didn't have any instructions, and they were hard to find on their website. Also, the sample filament that comes with this printer wasn't enough for them to even finish the initial print. And I agree, the sample filament that they sent is just the tiniest amount, just so you can learn how to load the filament. But it's not enough to print any of the samples that even come on the SD card, which to me is a serious shortcoming. But once they finally got that first build going, it was really exciting to watch it go. And once they found the instructions, the instructions led them through the process extremely well. However, at this point, they're kind of stuck loading up the, a slicer and learning how to use a slicer. So far has kind of been the next hurdle that they need to get over and it's taking them a little while to do it. Now, all of this was done without any of my, my hands on. I was letting them learn how to do it. I wanted to see how a total stranger would do with the Monoprice. And, you know, I'm going to be saying this a lot, but for $200, they actually did pretty well. But not quite as far as I was hoping for. When I got mine, there were some instructions in the box, and I think these are the same instructions that they found because, yeah, they did a great job of setting you up on the whole thing. But there were a couple of things uh, that this missed. Uh, first of all, one of the first things I did was I said, why have they got masking tape on the build tape plate? And I ripped that stuff right off. It wasn't blue tape. It was just regular masking tape. And, of course, once I exposed a plain metal uh, build plate underneath it, I went, oh, that was their build surface. It's not a very good build surface. I suppose it works uh, for a little while, but one of the first things I did was I took a sheet of build tack that I have uh, that I got a long time ago for experimenting with, and I cut it to size and I put it down on here. Now, what I wish I had known was that, uh, so this levels from above. It's a four-point leveling system that you screw from above, which is a very interesting way to do it. I've never seen another 3D printer do it that way. And I kind of don't like it, to be honest. I mean, uh, have, I, usually I like to put my nozzle right above the screw uh, and, and measure it from there, but I can't because I need to move the nozzle out of the way to move the screw and then bring it back to check and then move it out of the way. It's frustrating. It's, it's annoying. It's... It's not desirable that way. But the other thing is those screws are outside the print area, so there's a little area in front and in back just a screws width, uh, an M5 screws width there, that I could have saved the build tack on, but it wasn't really a big deal. So it, the 120 by 120 build area that's in here just starts right here. Now, talking about that build area, Everybody talks about, oh, it's a mini and it's, it's so small. But the truth is, most of the things that I print, almost everything that I printed, will fit on this build area easily. Even when I load a plate, I very rarely do more than this much area because the bigger the print that you get, the more likely it is to fail. So small prints are actually kind of the norm. So this build area isn't a hindrance at all. But back to my experience, once I, I got my build tack on there, then I started the first print. The first print that I did was the cat sample that they had on there. Now, I don't know what it is. It just says cat. And, cat. and I still don't know what it is because it laid down a raft, you know, the way a lot of prints do. And then it started to build the cat on there, and it, it didn't stick to its own raft. I've never seen a raft that was so easy to remove that it didn't even stay stuck in the first place. So... 
winner? Loser? I'm not really sure. It was awful. And so I put it away and I tried the other one, which was the elephant print. And this one printed beautifully. Again, I didn't print this with their sample because they didn't give me enough filament. But fortunately, I've got plenty of filament to work with. So I went ahead and uh, uh, did a their elephant print. And isn't the cute little elephant right there? Absolutely love it. Turned out fantastic. Looks great. Now I've got a little elephant that I, I have no idea what to do with. But... It did indeed prove <laughs> that the printer works and that it's good to go. Now, what I noticed while this was printing was that this thing's menu is absolutely fantastic. And I've got it turned off so its sound won't interfere with the video. But I love the menu that this thing has on here. For a $200, for a $800 3D printer, for a $1,000 3D printer, it's got a really great menu to it. And when you're printing, you can adjust the temperature right there on the menu. You can pause the print at any time. If you wanted to do something fancy like changing out filament midway, totally allows you to do it. It's absolutely fantastic. Their menu is great. Their menu is not as in-depth as the Marlin menu is, for example, but overall, it's fantastic. So after I tried their sample print, it was time to try out my own print. And so I, well, I've got Simplify 3D loaded up, but switching between different machines on Simplify 3D can be a pain. And I thought, I've got a G-code machine. Why don't I take this opportunity to experiment with all of those slicers that I never could because I didn't have a G-code machine before? So I loaded up Cura, and I loaded up Slithreer. That's what I'm going to call it, Slithreer. And uh, I tried Repeater Host, but then I found out it's just a front end for Slithreer, so forget that, I'll just use Slithreer. And then, in my searching around, I discovered that you can turn Wi-Fi on this device, and the heavens opened. Oh, you have to go in and program it and give it the password to your Wi-Fi. It hooks up just like your computer, just like any other machine. But then once you do that, you can take and uh, open up a web browser, Point it to the IP address that appears on the front of this device, which it might float, it might move, but it makes it easy to find it by putting it right there on uh, on the menu for you. And then you can take your G-code that you slice in any slicer that you want, drag it and drop it onto the menu. It will upload it over the Wi-Fi. You don't have to move SD cards, and you can even tell it to print from there. Heck, if I were clever, I could have this thing... Uh, uh, you know, route out to the outside world, and I could start a print from Zimbabwe. I don't know what I'd be doing in Zimbabwe, but I could do it, and that is super cool. That's something I could never do with my old 3D printer without some major additional hardware, which I've often considered, and now that I've tried it out, oh, I've used this printer for so many quick prints that I was like, oh, I just don't want to have to deal with the fact that that uh, I've got to run and go get filament and, or run and go get the SD card and load it up and bring it back and I'll oh, just Wi-Fi it over there and it's great. Plus it's a new printer, plus it's got the cooling fan so it does real great accurate prints, especially with PLA. It prints ABS okay, but the fan actually kind of works against you on that one. Even with the build tack and the printer at a high temperature, I kind of have to take the fan off and, and that's messy. So this is, it's not a PLA machine only exactly but it works best with PLA still I absolutely love I love the opportunity that I had to play with different slicers now that I've had a chance to play with different slicers I feel like there might be a future video where I talk about the different slicers and, and the pros and cons for each one of them but overall this machine has outperformed my expectations in so many ways for a $200 3d printer it's fantastic Heck, for a $600 3D printer, this would have still been a good deal, and yet it's only $200. It's solid. Now, it's not perfect. I did have the thermal couple, thermal stir, whatever they're using to measure temperature. I think it's a thermistor on this one. I had it break down. And finding the Facebook groups, there's a Facebook group, there's a Reddit group, there's not a Google group for this one, but the Facebook and the Reddit group, I talked to them, I... I, I went on there and I found that other people had had this problem. Turns out they did a shoddy soldering job on the thermocouple. Now I bought some extra thermocouples and I thought I'd get some fancy connectors so I could connect them and disconnect them. I saw somebody make it so that he could remove and place an entire new extruder assembly on here. Kind of like uh, the MakerBot or the Ultimaker 2 do or 3 does 
where you could just remove the entire thing at once and he just had some connectors and thought, ooh, I gotta get that. But then uh, I ran out of funds for a little while, had to <laughs> scale back on things. And so I thought, well, never mind, I'll just replace their shoddy soldering job with my own soldery, you know, shoddy soldering job. Hmm, I found a new tongue twister. And uh, it's back to printing and it works just fine. Hopefully it'll stay working for a while, but when it doesn't, maybe I'll finally do that upgrade. But yeah, I had to take it apart. I had to do a little bit of soldering, and then it was back to printing. So in a way, I, I mean, what do you expect for a $200 3D printer? It's not perfect. There's still things, but it's upgradable, and it's open, and I can take it apart, and I can make those changes myself. And that's that's just super exciting. So I'm really really surprised and impressed by this. Now, if you're hoping for a $200 3D printer that you just press go on and get Christmas, well, we're still not there yet. It's still a 3D printer that takes some work and some learning, and you have to learn hardware, and you have to learn software, and you might have to take it apart and fix it once in a while. You could even upgrade it, but it doesn't need to, it, even the stock works great, except for, like I said, I had to do one little soldering job and, you know, use some, uh, the soldering iron and, and some of that shrink tubing to fix it, and it worked just fine. So I got to experience that. Now, if you don't want to experience that, if you don't want to do that, well, like I said in my 10 thing or, or 10 cold hard truths about 3D printing video, uh, 3D printing is work. If you're not ready to at least do that, then maybe you shouldn't get this. But overall, for the price, it's it's enough that you could go, well, if it doesn't work out, I'm only out 200 bucks. But if it does work out, you got a 3D printer, and it's really not hard to work out. So I may make some videos about slicing models and sending them to the printer so that, well, so that my parents can do it, but so that other people can, can get some help with that and get over that, uh, that hurdle. I might also talk a little bit about setting up Wi-Fi, because it wasn't set up with Wi-Fi by default. I had to upgrade the firmware, but that was super easy to do, way easier than on my Rep 1. We're talking about a difference of, of years of development between these two, but this was a $2,000 printer in its day, and this is a $200 printer, and in a lot of ways, I'm liking this one better. Of course, I'm still keeping my Rep 1 around because it does print more materials. It can print the flexible materials that this can't because it's a Bowden extruder, which you know, I, I don't love, but hey, there it is, and it works, and I'm not too disappointed with it. Overall, it's a mine. All I have for this are minor gripes. It's a fantastic machine, a great 3D printer. I'm happy to have it, and it's exciting to, to have added this one to my arsenal of 3D printers without much sacrifice to do so. It's still a 3D printer. It still needs work, but for only $200, it really isn't much worse than anything I've had to deal with with any other 3D printer, so that's fantastic. That really is amazing. I, I, I love my baby, so I absolutely love it. Anyways, that's all that I've got for you today. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, remember, safety first. Go do something awesome, because I know you can.